In this video, I'm going to do something I've had planned for a long time now. I'm going to do an updated Arch install guide. Let's get to it. So here we are in our virtual machine. This is VirtualBox, of course. Uh, the machine has four cores and four gigs of RAM. And right now, we have just booted into the environment. I have done nothing else. Now, the first, our first step is to just make sure that we're in a an EFI environment. So we're going to LS, SY, uh, oh, first we got to get clicked in. So we're going to do LS. Don't tell me this thing's going to be slow now. SYS, firmware, EFI, EFI, VARS. Not CARS. And if you get output like that, you know you're in, in an EFI environment. So let's clear the screen and, and move on. Now we need to make sure we have internet. So let's, let's ping, let's say three times, archlinux.org. And we have internet. Clear the screen again. Uh, now we need to update the system clock. So time date CTL. This thing has been slow. Why this has been slow, I couldn't begin to tell you. But it has. And it finally shows up. I have done zero editing. This is just weirdness. Debian didn't do this. OpenSUSE didn't do this. But Arch does this. Why, I don't know. But time date CTL. Set dash NTP. True. Now we need to partition our disks. So I like to use CF disks. That's what I'm going to use. A GPT part partition table. Now for this scheme here I'm going to use, I'm going to use a boot partition, a swap partition, a root partition, and a home partition. So I'm actually, but it's going to, I'm going to do it like boot, root, swap, home. Because it's on an SSD, it doesn't really matter. So uh, the the boot partition I like to do 600 megs, 600 megabytes, and then once we're once you get that made, go over to type and hit enter, and then go all the way up to EFI system. Then go down to free space again, select new. Now we're going to make our root partition. I like I like to make a root partition of about 25 gigs. We're going to make that the Linux file system, and then arrow down to free space again for new. And since I have four gigs of RAM, to be able to sleep and suspend and that kind of stuff, they say it's best to have twice the amount of RAM for your swap. So I'm going to do eight gigs. And change the type from that to Linux swap. Now come back to free space and reallocate the rest of it to Linux file system. Write that out and then type yet the type the word yes. And then arrow over to quit. And we are done partitioning our disk. So when you clear the screen and we can do LSBLK to look at our partitions. So we have a 64 gig 64 gigabyte disk we have well 600 megs or 572 for our efi partition we have a 25 gig root an 8 gig swap and a 30 and a half gig home now we need to actually add file systems to these partitions so with sda1 being our efi partition we need to do mkfs dot fat hyphen cap yeah, fat hold on f32 slash dev slash sda1 and sda2 is our root so mkfs dot ext4 slash dev slash sda2 
now we need to do our swap so mkff oh sorry mk swap slash dev slash sda3 and swap on slash dev slash sda3 and for our last partition which will be our home partition we're going to mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash sda4 all right we are done partitioning our disk pretty painless so far let's clear the screen now we need to mount the file now we need to mount the file systems so i'm going to do lsblk one more time just so i can kind of keep an eye on things and not get lost we're going to mount slash dev slash sda2 which is our root to slash mnt we're going to make a directory slash and slash mnt slash boot actually we need to do that mnt slash boot slash efi now we need to mount slash dev sda1 and mnt slash boot slash efi and we need to make another directory and mount slash dev slash sda4 in mnt slash home now we need to pick our mirrors but to pick to go through the uh, etsy slash pacman.d slash mirror list you can go through and and go through hundreds of servers and pick the ones that are closest to you or you can actually download a mirror ranking script but i actually uh i actually generated a mirror list a while back so uh, i'm going to just download my mirror list from github so we're going to i'm just going to synchronize the databases to make sure everything's i'm downloading all the newest stuff that kind of that kind of thing it's going to take just a second but if you don't feel like if you actually just don't even feel like going through and picking the mirrors you can leave the you can leave the list as it is but I'm just going to show what I what I generally do. So we're going to Pacman dash capital S get and see I'm going to nah, just get. So now we're going to get clone https colon slash slash GitHub dot com slash linux dabbler slash arch mirror lists now the mirror list that i made or generated rather and just put on github was actually is just for the us so i'm going to cd into arch mirror list do an ls and, you, and i have it separated between http https and http so if you wanted to do just http you can uh we can make a backup of the mirror list so we're going to uh, cp etsy pacman.d slash mirror list into slash etsy pacman.d slash mirror list dot back so now that we've got a backup of, of the original mirror list, we can uh, just cat these files in, or cat one file into the mirror list and we're done. So if so tell you what, let's just cat the mirror list out to the terminal. So let's look at it. And these are all of the US mirror lists or US servers. So we're going to cat HTTP mirror list into slash etsy slash pacman dot d slash mirror list 
why Arch has been so, why this thing has been so slow, I do not know. We'll just hit enter there. And the file that we catted out to the terminal is now in that file. So, but if you wanted to use the HTTPS, if you, you we can actually append that to to that file. So we're so let's do the cat command again, HTTPS, and we're going to use two greater than symbols and send it to the same file to just append it to the end. All right, so we are done there. Now it's time for the packstrap command. Now since Arch has updated their install method, there's there's some more things you have to include in the packstrap command. But for me, I like to go ahead and go ahead and install a bunch of the stuff that I'm going to need anyway. That way I don't have to just pac pacman dash capital S whatever while I'm rooted in. I'll just go ahead and let packstrap do it all. Packstrap into mnt base base devel linux linux firmware uh, efi boot manager uh, i like to do vim git let's see what else uh, dhcp oh and dh client uh, network manager ZSH or bash if you wanted to use bash, but I'm going to try ZSH in this one uh, the man pages Text info uh, Open SSH uh, parted sudo uh, wget And that's about it So now we just let packstrap take care of it and this this generally takes a little while, so just kind of go get you some coffee. And I'm probably going to fast forward through a lot of this just to just for brevity. All right, that didn't take very long. So now we just need to generate our files our file system table. So we're going to gen fs tab dash capital U in mount into slash MNT slash Etsy slash FS tab and to verify that we can cat that out cat slash MNT slash Etsy slash FS tab if you get something like that you're in pretty good shape so now that we've generated our FS tab, we need to chroot into the system. So arch chroot or ch root slash mnt. We're now in the system. So we need to set our time zone. Uh, the quickest way to do that is just do a sim link. So ln dash sf slash user slash share slash zone info slash America slash Chicago to slash Etsy slash local time. Finally, now we need to set our hardware clock. So H W C L O C K dash dash S Y S T O H C. And now we need to deal with our locales. Here's the quick and easy way to do it. If you're in my time zone, which is the central um, central standard American time zone, we need to echo a n g equals e n underscore u s dot u t f dash eight into slash etsy slash locale dot conf. Now we need to generate our locale. So locale. dash gen and we're good to go there now we need to set a host name you can name your computer whatever you want I'm gonna name mine failbox so echo 
fail box into slash Etsy slash host name. Now we need to edit our host file. So we're going to vim slash Etsy slash hosts. Our home address, of course, 127.0.0.1. localhost when it pops up and then colon colon one and localhost again and the address one more time and I'll put failbox dot local domain and failbox WQ to quit and our host file has been edited. So now we need to make sure that we have internet when we boot back in. So we're going to do system CTL enable network manager. And now be now be careful here because uh, capitalization is very important. You want a capital N and a capital M in net for network manager. Hit enter and that is enabled and, and it will be started at, on our next boot. Now we need to create a root password. So P-A-S-S-W-D is our command. The password. Let's do the bootloader now. Did I install Grub? Apparently I didn't install Grub. I should have done that earlier. Grub dash install target equals x86 underscore 64 dash EFI space dash dash EFI dash directory equals slash boot slash EFI installation finished and no errors reported so now we can do our grub make config so grub dash MK C O N F I G dash O slash boot slash grub slash grub dot C F G. Now we can exit our Truid environment. Exit. Unmount everything and reboot. We can boot back into Arch Linux. And here we are. Arch Linux is installed. So let's log in as root. And we have internet. So we can we can go ahead and configure everything from there. But this is where I'm going to cut it off today. Uh, I just wanted to do a an updated uh, Arch install because there's some extra packages that need to be added to the packstrap command for a working system like Bash or ZSH. Uh, of course, your network manager, Grub, all, and all that. So I just kind of wanted to highlight that, and hopefully this will make everything a little easier. We now have a working Arch install in an EFI environment with a separate home partition. So that's about all I've got for today. I would like to extend a big thank you out to Mr. Eric, Eric Dubois. Uh, his older Arch install guide was actually what I used as a template for this one. And I just added a few other things that I like to do and a, a couple other things from the Arch Wiki to make this all work together. So that's, that's about all I've got for today. I think I've already said that though. Thank you for watching. Y'all have a nice evening. Like, share, and subscribe.